Hello, I'm Martin Warwick, reporting from the Small Cells World Summit at Excel in East London, and I'm talking with Sami Susiaho, who's Head of Edge Technologies at the Cloud. What's the business case for carrier Wi-Fi? Lots of people say there isn't one. Well, it's like any, any business case. If you have demand, you want to meet it, and then there is potential revenues from it. Uh, carrier Wi-Fi doesn't talk about monetization in terms of added services like, let's say, location-based services. Um, having said that, there is no definition for carrier Wi-Fi yet. We are in the midst of making it in Wi-Fi Alliance. Wireless Broadband Alliance has released their definition. I'm a part of Wireless Broadband Alliance and sit there. Um, from that point of view, it was about roaming, ease of roaming. Uh, so let's say there would be international travelers coming to this Excel center here. They would be able to easily access or effortlessly, completely effortlessly access the Wi-Fi network and uh, there would be some money to the, let's say, the AT&T, uh, which is the host operator in terms of offloading some of the data and serving their customer, and customer wouldn't notice uh, the cellular experience. I mean, the Wi-Fi experience for roaming would be similar to cellular. I mean, today, if you go to France, you don't have to do anything to access the mobile data network or place a call. You wouldn't even think of doing anything. There's no reason that you have to do anything in Wi-Fi either. There are mechanisms to make it effortless and carrier Wi-Fi is really just tying into those. So ease of access means more usage, and uh, that must turn into revenues. If you do the uh, right thing, build a network in a way that it doesn't topple over when you start to connect everyone effortlessly. That really is the number one challenge with carrier Wi-Fi, is that now everyone can connect to your network. Now what? So now you have 100 times more users than you had before. The networks can't take it unless they have been designed for that. So how is Wi-Fi being used by telcos, especially alongside small cells? It's a complementary technology for cellular. It's certainly something that the devices can utilize when it's the best technology out there. I wouldn't want to try to hold on a voice call while running through this Excel center. That cellular technology is probably the best way of doing that. But then again, if I have to download a big file, why not use Wi-Fi for that? We touched on this, or you touched on this very briefly a moment ago, but I'd like you to put a bit more flesh on the bones, if you would. How can Wi-Fi be used, do you think, to drive new revenue channels? Well, there's plenty that you can do when you have a technology that's supported by every single device. Wi-Fi is the only wireless technology, well, bar Bluetooth, that, that's on every smartphone. And um, the ability to make money out of that, well, it should be obvious. You have something that everyone has, and what can you do with it? You can serve data, you can locate the device, you can serve content that's rele relevant to that location, maybe to the user profile, given that the user has given that consent to, to be able to do that. Um, you can um, serve uh, emergency services, for example. You could send emergency messages. Uh, the standards would allow a, a 911 type of emergency message to be sent through a Wi-Fi network to every Wi-Fi device, for example. Um, there's plenty of ways you can make money out of being able to connect the users. That's what users want. They want to be connected effortlessly. And how can carrier Wi-Fi be used to leverage the mobile roaming experience? Well, first we have to define what carrier Wi-Fi is to be able to do a mobile roaming experience. Um, to be able to truly get to the point where the roadmap really delivers where it should be doing, we need to wait for Passpoint Phase 3. But Passpoint Phase 1, which is out today, and our network certainly does support it, it allows the users to effortlessly connect. So you don't have to do anything. You don't even have to know about the network. You can connect effortlessly. And that's certainly a big part of, of the monetization. Now, that does bring a concern. So you have to have some way of, of gating access so that you won't connect too many devices, because that will just topple over the network. And Wi-Fi as an offload network has traditionally been used just, you know, connect easily and once you connect it to there, the cellular core loses the visibility of the device, which then means that they don't really care about the user experience. So of course the Wi-Fi network has to worry about the user experience. And that's something that I personally have spent a lot of time fixing, uh, being able to use the full asset or the full capacity of the wireless network without using too much of it, so not toppling over in terms of capacity. We call it ABC, or always best connected. Sounds simple. All you have to do is to maintain good user experience is to never offer a bad experience. And finally, how's the technology for carrier Wi-Fi being developed and improved? Well, firstly and foremostly, the, the access points have to be of certain quality, um, so really good quality, rather than 
something that you would be able to use at home, which is fine for home use, you can't use in a hotspot. You can't use a carrier grade Wi-Fi access point that can only do a half, half a dozen users or a dozen users concurrently. We need an access point that can do 500 concurrent users without breaking a sweat, which is what we are using. Then you have to worry about how to maintain the quality of experience and most importantly, tell the device what kind of experience would be available from said access point. In any given place, the, uh, there are plenty of ways that the device can connect to a wireless network. You have at least one, two, three Wi-Fi networks, a couple of different radios on the cellular side, and depending on what the device wants to do, it can choose the best way of getting it done. Let's say it has a voice call, the requirements are low latency and uh, low packet loss, but if it wants to do a video stream, for example, latency doesn't matter, and it can tolerate packet loss as well. It just wants a lot of bandwidth. So, courses for courses. Sami Sushiaho, thanks very much. Thank you.